Hey, this is Tom Earl for my senior project. I'm doing sort of an advanced version of the Broken Appliance Lab, uh, and Broken Appliance Lab Mark II, if you will. And I'm going to be pulling apart this fan and seeing what's inside. So, first off, there's a screw in here that has a star shaped head and a strip, so I'm going to have to drill that out. Nice, came out. Nice. Your dad is right. Yeah. Okay, so now I've gotten that strip screw out, I can just take the others out with a screwdriver. Okay, so now that I've got all the screws, I can you know just pop the co cover off, which I just did, and I'll take a look inside. So the basics are the fan blade, the motor, which is behind the fan blade, which I'll show you later once I can get it out, and the wiring. And so right now I'm just going to take the rest of this. And here I have a piece of iron and a solenoid, and this basically creates the induction. This creates the magnetic field that turns the induction motor. And I'm going to go a bit more in depth about induction motors and inductors and induction later, but that's the basics of this fan. Okay, so today we're going to take a deeper look at the fan I just assembled. I already pointed out the AC induction motor, and as you can see, this has a couple of copper loops here and here, and these are called shadings. This is actually a special type of AC induction motor. This is called a shaded pole induction motor, and I have a similar motor that's been fully disassembled. So here, you can see that there's the shadings, and then there's also a solenoid hooked up to the, these wires. And these wires lead to this, a switch, which lets you control the speed at which the fan rotates. So the current runs through the wires, in, and into the solenoid and creates a man magnetic field in the solenoid which in turn creates a magnetic field in this iron in this piece of iron here and this magnetic field in the iron induces a current in the copper shadings which in turn uh, produces a magnetic field which opposes the magnetic field creating the current create, uh, inducing the current and I'm, let's take a bit of a deeper look at a uh, bit of a more in-depth look at that so, I've drawn, I've drawn a diagram, a bit of a simplified diagram on the boards. Here you can see, so this is one situation in which the magnetic field is increasing to the left in the solenoid, which means that the field outside the solenoid is increasing to the right. So, if you take a look at the copper shading in the top left, you can see that the initial magnetic field is to the right, which means that it's going to, if you use the right hand rules in Lenz's Law, you can find that the, you can determine that the induced magnetic field is going to be to the left. Therefore, the net magnetic field, when you add together the uh, uh, vectors of the initial magnetic field and the induced magnetic field, you'll find that the net magnetic field, while still going to the right, is going to be less than the initial magnetic field. Which means that at this point in the iron, the magnetic field is going to be greater than it, than it is going to be at the shading. So, this is in effect going to create a magnetic field in which the lines are going from the bottom left towards the top right. So, and it's going to keep doing that while the magnetic field is increasing to the left. However, when the magnetic field starts decreasing to the left, you're going to get a situation in which in that same, in that same shading, the, indu the initial magnetic field is to the right, but the induced magnetic field is also to, to the right. So when you add these up, you're going to get a net magnetic field to the right that is greater than the initial magnetic field. So you're going to get magnetic field lines going from the top left to the bottom right. When the current flips, because this is of course an AC motor, so the current's going to be 
um, changing direction at 60 hertz. When the current flips, you're going to get a magnetic field that's initially increasing to the right. So the magnetic field through the shading is going to be to the left, which means that the initial magnetic field is the induced magnetic field is going to be to the right. So you're going to get again a net magnetic field that's less than the initial magnetic field. So you're going to get magnetic field lines going from the top right to the bottom left. And the final situation is when the magnetic field is decreasing to the right. So you can see that the initial magnetic field is again going to be to the left, but the induced field this time is going to be to the left as well. And this is again going to create a net magnetic field that is greater than the initial magnetic field. Only this time the net magnetic field is going to be to the left. So, and in this case you're going to have magnetic field lines going from the bottom right to the top left. So, in effect, this AC current and the solenoid and the shadings combine to create a magnetic field that, that rotates around in a circle. And the effect that this has is to almost draw the rotor around with it because when you take a look at the rotor, so taking a more in-depth look at the rotor, we see that it has um, interspersed bars of darker and lighter material. And the lighter bars are aluminum. They're actually the ones that carry the current that is induced by the magnetic, the, exterior, the external magnetic field. And the way they work is that the current flows along the vertical, the slanted aluminum bars from either from the essentially aluminum rings on the bottom and top. And this allows the current to flow up in some of these bars and down in some of the others. And the reason these are slanted is to reduce the noise produced by the rotor when it's turning. So taking a, another look at this, I've drawn a diagram on the boards. So the way this works is that for the purpose of this example, I'm going to say that the magnetic field in the solenoid is increasing to the left. And as we know, it creates a north pole here and a south pole here. And magnetic field lines that go up to the left. So for the purpose of this example, I'm going to consider the rotor as if it were just a loop because it's easier to consider a loop than it is to consider a say 20 vertical bars. So this loop is comprised is composed of the essential essentially the aluminum conducting ring on top which is this and then the two the bars that go from the two from the lower ring to the upper ring. So if you can use your right hand rule to determine that the current flowing through this part through this bar would be coming out of the board and the current flowing through this bar would be going into the board, thus forming a circuit in which the current flows. And again, you can use a right-hand rule to determine that the force acting on this, on the bar where the current is flowing out of the board is um, like this. I'm sorry, that's a very bad drawing. It's like this. And the current acting on the bar where the current, the magnetic the force acting on the bar where the current is going into the board is like this. And that essentially, those two forces essentially cause the bar or the rotor, I'm sorry, the, those two forces cause the rotor to turn in a circle and follow the rotating magnetic field. And, and that is essentially how a squirrel cage rotor, as this rotor here is called, works.